Hi, I'm Matt, technical trainer for Vibraline ACOM. Uh, today we're going to talk about and demonstrate bearing removal and installation. Prior to disassembly and reassembly, we have to make sure we have the proper tools. Of course, safety glasses, gloves, safety shoes, and then cleaning. It's very important that we clean before we disassemble and prior to reassembly. So the tools required are bearing puller, micrometer, digital caliper, flat blade screwdrivers, socket and ratchet, micrometer and telescoping gauge, and grease gun. What this is going to entail is disassembly of this rotating element. I'll disassemble the element, take the bearing assembly out, I'm going to use the pullers to remove the bearings. Then I will clean the shaft and use a press to reinstall the bearings. Now let's take a more detailed look at that. Okay, the first thing you want to do before disassembling so you can determine what parts you'll need is uh, clean the best you can. Clean the housing, wipe everything down. I've had to use a pressure washer on pumps that I worked on and uh, clean them the best I could before I disassemble them. Once you've cleaned it the best you can, disassemble the pump. Before you begin your bearing installation, you should determine the parts you'll need. Uh, new bearings, uh, seals, that, that kind of thing. Uh, when you do disassemble, make sure you clean everything and inspect it. And lay your parts out in order to make the process as expedient and clean as possible. Mic your, your shafts and your bearings to make sure the fits are correct. And you've determined what you need. You want to use the proper installation procedures. Uh, for instance, uh, we used a press today to push the shaft into the bearings. In order to do no damage to the bearing, the best process for installing the bearings on the shafts is using a press. You don't want to use a hammer and a drift. I know in the old days, it seems like that's the way it was done. Once that's done, you can begin to reassemble the pump. Make sure your grease fittings are clean, your grease gun is clean, and you're using the correct grease. This particular pump is grease bearings. A lot of your pumps will be oil bath. As far as when or whether you should change bearings, uh, the best way to determine that is use a smart machine checker to check your bearings. Using the SMC, for instance, if you get an indication they're a little noisy, you can add grease, recheck them, and most of the time that will fix it. You can actually leave your accelerometer on the bearing, and as you add grease, you can see that the uh, vibration goes down. Uh, so we're going to take a two-minute break. Uh, please submit questions for our Q&A. I think anybody who has pumps or fans, any kind of equipment that's mounted up to a motor, 
You should take this class. You can always read the instructions and go through step by step, but stuff always comes up, especially working on old equipment. It's always good to talk to somebody who's been doing it for 30 years. What intrigued me about the class is all of the precision, alignment, vibration, uh, analysis, um, everything the class offered. Most of the classes we've been to that you just sit there all day in class with a book and a PowerPoint. A lot of other classes I have, they kind of just read the book to you. I think we spent at least 80% hands-on, probably more, which made it a whole lot better. Our RPM class is really good for anybody in the industry. We're teaching some old skills and some new skills. The number one thing is the instruction that you're getting, the knowledge that they have, hands-on knowledge, not book knowledge, but hands-on experience knowledge where they can, uh, in layman's terms, tell you what they're talking about by giving you a past experience. You know, we have brand new technicians straight out of tech school. We have engineers with two or three decades or more of experience. We've had maintenance managers, and supervisors. Everybody benefits from that. This I'm able to ask question after question. I was just talking to Stan about a really unique problem I'm having, and uh, he's actually helped out a lot. It's time well spent, you're, you're going to learn a lot, and it's going to be fun. It's not a boring class. It's a good class. I think any mechanic in any industrial site, power plant, refinery, water treatment, whatever it is, it's all the same. It's definitely not going to hurt. Awesome class, I've got to tell you straight up. Some of the best training I've ever been, if not the best. Thanks for submitting your questions. So let's have a look at them and see if I can give you some answers. Check my phone here. Uh, first question, why can't I use a brass bar and a hammer to install a bearing on a shaft? Um, it actually increases the uh, uh, chances of damaging the rolling elements from shock, shock load on them. Uh, it also uh, could allow contaminants, maybe the chips from the brass bar or whatever else you're using, to uh, enter the bearing and contaminate it. Uh, next question, uh, how do I determine uh, what the correct lubricant should be for my bearings? Uh, the answer uh, is the quickest and surest way is to uh, check with the manufacturer's manual that came with a piece of equipment or uh, if you don't have it, you can co contact the manufacturer. Uh, an example would be uh, Ghoul's Pumps. Uh, they're, they're, they have a book out on every pump that they make and the proper lubricant for the different temperatures and different applications. Uh, if I'm using a bearing heater, uh, what's the maximum acceptable temperature? And uh, it's usually 250 degrees. You don't want to go over 250. Uh, you can damage the uh, bearing uh, by changing the metallurgy or shorten the life of it, uh, life of the bearing. Um, in most cases, uh, it, it'd be a good idea to use a uh, bearing heater for uh, bearings that are have a 50 millimeter uh, inner race or ID or larger. I guess we can wrap it up now. Uh, we disassembled this rotating element, uh, removed the bearing assembly, and uh, changed out, reinstalled the bearings, and put it back together. Uh, we have some really good blogs on our webpage uh, for bearing installation and maintenance. That'd be a good resource if you want to learn more. And uh, please feel free to continue submitting questions. I'm Mac McCormack. Hope you enjoyed the webinar and see you next time.